Hey, welcome in everybody to this latest edition of Jetpack to the Bank from True Philadelphia and Sports Care. We are going to be doing a quick power rankings episode, but first, of course, the Phillies had back-to-back days of negative tests, which is thankfully, thank God that happened, and hopefully we have that tomorrow. And then we're going to be set for doubleheader baseball on Saturday. That would do a preview for you on Friday. We're going to have that show come out, a preview show to the game. And then maybe, a po- are we still doing a post-game show? <laughs> still want to do it? Yeah. Yeah, so that's what that's the main thing we do is yeah so show. we'll do a post game show to the double header which there's no way that one's going to be the normal 15 20 minutes either that might be about the length of the original post game show for the series cuz you can't really talk about a double header in 10 to 15 minutes um unless if you talk like an auctioneer but that's not going to be too productive either so but we also wish the Marlins very well they now have i believe it's 18 confirmed cases uh, hopefully they're able to figure something out there. I don't know if that series is going to end up being played next week for safety reasons, but we pray for them and wish them all well. But we'll do a preview series for if that series happens, that one will probably come out on Sunday for the – well, no, Monday, because the Marlins series, I think, starts on Tuesday. So that will probably come out Monday for the Marlins series. But we wish them all well. So we're moving to the uh, power rankings, which is by default going to bring up players who impressed us, like KBO MVP Darren Ruff, who helped the uh, Giants to split the series uh, with the, uh, you know, Dodgers. What a, what a stud. Like, absolute tank that guy is. Um, <laughs> but uh, you have the Dodgers are still ranked first, which is obviously correct, because in the first series of the season – we saw Boston was still a solid team last year overall, or not Boston, the Yankees, and they lost to the Orioles in the first series of the season. And Boston, of course, did that this year, but Boston doesn't have as good of a chance to be a solid team as the Yankees uh, did last year. Not even close. Um, but uh, so some teams just lose in the first series. The Dodgers, to you, are probably still the top ranked team, I would think, right? I mean, they they just split mm-hmm. the arguably one of the worst teams in the league. So. I- I don't know why they would stay at one, honestly. If we're if we're doing power rankings based on the first week, I know I don't think you can leave them at one. Okay, I didn't know if you just because sometimes in the first week it's hard to really judge because baseball is such a unpredictable. Like well, out of- I agree, and that's what makes them so hard. But why? I mean, if you're going to make that excuse for them, you should make that excuse for everyone, and the rankings should stay the same, in my opinion. If you're going to, if we're going to say that. That's a good point. No, so that's why I'm confused why they stayed one. I mean, they they split against the worst, arguably one of the worst teams in the MLB. While you have teams like Oakland, who's projected to be really good, and they get off to a decent start. You have the Rays, who were supposed to be pretty good. I'm not high on the Rays, but they get off to a hot start. You have the Twins that look better than the Dodgers right now. Um, I mean, obviously it stinks that the Yankees got canceled, but they are this week. But they looked better than the Dodgers did when they faced Washington. So I mean. To, to me, when th- these came out and you sent them to me, and I was looking at them. No, I was honestly confused why the Dodgers uh, stayed at one, honestly. Okay. No, that's respectable. That makes sense. I was just thinking from an overall roster perspective, um, they're a team that you would look at and go, maybe they just stayed at one because people figured they got off. Also, it doesn't help um, when uh, – granted, that game didn't affect them that much. So, no, Kershaw, I mean – didn't affect them that much because they walloped them that game. Their problem was their offense got off to a great start and then only scored five runs in the final two games of the series. Like the article said, that was their issue. Their offense was the Dodgers in the first two games. Then they decided to forget how to score in the last two games when Drew, give me the ball, Smiley, came back in and shut them down again after shutting them down with a relief inning. How about that? That's why we should have kept them. (laughs) Well, we should have kept them, but we didn't. But we'll, we'll move past that. Uh, no, but you're right. They're the best team on paper. But to me, power rankings, if you're going to change them by. week to week, yep. they're, they're not based off a of roster on paper. They're based off how the team's performing. Um, so I don't – and that's why that's why I was kind of shocked to see them stay there. I'm not saying they should drop down outside the top ten. I'm not saying that. But, I mean, if you're asking me power rankings-wise – who looked better this opening week, the Indians or Dodgers? The Indians, so did the A's, and so did Twi- the Rays. Yeah. So, like, to, to, to me, 
especially when the twins were. I mean, I don't know what they. Um, the twins who started out, what would they start out at six? So they're already a top ten team top. in here, and they go out and win their first three of their first four. Um, I don't know. And it was also a hard week. It was actually pretty cool to see. Nobody left the weekend undefeated. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool to see in the opening week. Um, kind of shows how balanced this year is, and that's something we talked about when we previewed the season was how like each division was kind of up for grabs, and you saw that from the jump. Um, the first weekend of baseball. So I thought that was a really cool thing to see here um, in this opening week, honestly. No, that that is completely true. That's completely true. Uh, the second team stayed the second team. That was the Yankees, who, of course, um, we weren't able to play for a series and is now going to play Baltimore. And by the way, for anybody who cares, Jose Ray is officially retired. Moving back to the Yankees. Um, the uh, So the... Um, Anyway, they had their ranked second, and they are obviously Giancarlo Stanton's trying to prove you wrong from our last podcast. And that's just me. <laughs> and uh, and um, he's going went four for nine with a pair of long balls, and they get a few unexpected off days, obviously, in the wake of that Miami situation. So do you think that's beneficial, or obviously Baltimore also hasn't been playing so both of these teams are coming in rusty. Uh, do you think what the the Orioles have a chance to do what they did last year and also beat the Yankees early in the season, or that's just going to be a one trick pony and they get the first series of the year like they did with Boston, and then they go back to being the Orioles? <laughs> uh, it's going to be a one weekend thing for Baltimore. I, I hope they so. enjoyed. <laughs> I hope they enjoyed the brief time above five hundred um, because it is not something that's going to last. Um. Yeah, I, they. I can't see them beating the Yankees unless. That'd be great. I don't know what. I mean, I assume Garrett Cole's probably throwing one of the games, right? That would be my assumption too, with the long layoff. Uh, well, I would have actually. Are they going play. through with that? What? The Marlins Yankees. Oh, yeah. There it is. I found. Out. Okay, so yeah. Tomorrow's matchups: J.A. Hat versus uh, was it John Means? I think it is right. That so yeah, John Means is the guy's name. Yeah, yeah I don't, so I don't, I don't see a way that uh, I, I don't see a way Baltimore survives this series. Um, but tonight, well, tonight's cold though. Yeah, tonight's cold against and however you say Asher, that. Asher Wolzikowski, I think is how you say that. Uh, but, I mean, to me, if the Yankees beat Baltimore, that shouldn't really change that much. I don't. I that's how bad I think Baltimore. Is. I don't think you should really move up in the rankings if you beat. No, Baltimore. no, 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 no. But their yeah. weekend series, they shouldn't move up for beating Boston either, because I I could probably get a hit off of some of the pitchers for Boston. It, like, like that's how bad. Yeah, Boston's it's respectable. That offense. I mean, Xander Bogarts one of the best shortstops so in the league. Offenses. Rafael Devers is one of the best. Up and coming third baseman in the league. Mitch Moreland's a respectable name. Um, JD Martinez is probably the best DH in the game. Uh, so they, they got a lot of respectable names on offense. Oh, Being I'm not, the Red knocking, Sox I'm not so. knocking our offense as our sec as my second team. The pitching though is putrid. The Phillies have a much better starting rotation than the Red Sox. The Red Sox have a better bullpen, but to win and actually have a chance to win a game, you would much rather have a so-so bullpen if you had that good of starters, because then you might be able to get your starters into the seventh. And then as long as two guys could show up, you're fine. Where Boston has one starter so far that's shown up all season. And we don't know what we're gonna, what they're going to get out of Nathan Avaldi. That's the, uh, their bull or not the bullpen. The, the offense is no concern because Jose uh, Peraza, which I know on the last uh, thing, Jose said he was fine with him being the second baseman, has looked like a changed man. And Kevin Pillar, since going to the Giants, looks like a changed man as a hitter. So they're off. It's just uh, pitching is the biggest concern with them. Ryan Weber throws meatballs for a living. And uh, Matt Hall was a minor league, I think, pitcher of the year. But that doesn't mean he's going to trade the dude throws like 87. He's basically Cole Irvin. Um, <laughs> so that's not going to work that well. Um but no, I agree with you. That does mean something for beating their offense. I just hated how we made the Rays look like they were the second coming of Christ, where Jose Iglesias raked against Boston, which usually happens, so I guess I'm not surprised. Alberto 
is one of the best average hitters after the first weekend. Um, so like, I did not, I did not like seeing them. And then guys that you didn't even expect to, you expect to do better, like Hayes and guys didn't even do good against Boston. Meanwhile, they still beat, and neither did Nunez as, as much as other. They still found a way to win with other guys. But you know, it is what it is. But. Uh, I agree. Beating Boston is somewhat of a feat, but they shouldn't beat the Yankees. I would laugh my you know what off if they beat the Yankees, and that would be great. Um, love to see those Yankees lose. Um, so, but third in the power ranking is the Twins. You have the Minnesota Twins move from sixth to third, and that's also because. They slugged nine home runs and so far scored a ridiculous 33 ones in four games, which is obviously first in the league. And also, how about Nelly Cruz playing like a 20-year-old at 40 years old? So, um, you think the Twins are in a good spot at the three spot? Yeah, I think that's respectable for them. Uh, I mean, they're they're getting it done. Uh, both sides of the ball, they got very, uh, like you said, Nelson Cruz, is playing really well. Um, obviously, he's always been a respectable name. He's always been very good. So I, I expected this out of him. Um, I expect him to be fine this year. Um, obviously, he's not going to hold up a 400 average on the season. But no, I think uh, I, I think a three is a pretty good spot for him with the way their offense is and what they've done so far. And it's going to be a fun fun race with them and the uh, Indians. Mm-hmm. No, that's a very good point. That's good. That's to be a team that doesn't get enough respect. Is uh, the Cleveland Indians, and we'll get into them whenever. No, we'll, yeah, we'll get to them soon because I, it's because of what you just said. They didn't get the respect at first, so they were ranked so low. But we'll get to them. They didn't move them up all the way. Um, but a team that I know Andrew's not the highest person on, but uh, like they said, Glass now, who I know Andrew is high on. I think you like Tyler Glass now, um, and Blake Schnell. Uh, both look good in their first starts. Um, the, they, Tampa looked like a team, as they said, they used two late comebacks to take a three game set from Toronto. But then like the article says they exploded for 19 runs in their first two games against the Braves. Um, and obviously the Braves, or as we say in the AOE, who I think a lot of us are chasing the pennant for our other podcast network and me and you thought were probably the AOE or the AOE, the NL East, um, top contender so looking that good against the Braves in the first two games is a pretty good feat uh I guess I think um yeah it's a good feat but I think the Rays ranked a little high you mentioned they didn't look good to start games last week uh Charlie Morton gets crushed uh, and he's supposed to be their ace um like you said they had to scramble back and find ways to scrap out uh two victories against Toronto who coming into the year isn't projected very high maybe Maybe they steal a third spot from the Red Sox at this point, but coming into the year, a projected fourth place team in that division. Um, it took them to come back in the ninth against a guy like Ken Giles, who quickly quickly went on the DL or the IL. So uh, I kind of kind of got an advantage there in that sense. Yeah, they did look good against the Braves for the most part, but uh, I mean, again, I'm not going off just one last game. I'm going off the whole week, and I, I thought uh, I, I thought they could have stayed a little lower because again. I mean, it was two we, games. Yeah, it was two games with the Braves series. They scored 19 total runs. That wasn't. If they did that in one game, I might rank them freaking first. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But, I'm just, <laughs> but, but uh, no, like, and that that where it comes in, like, and, and I guess I mean I don't know. It's just to to me when, when when to me teams that look better, and I guess I guess it's it's because of what they do and how they go off of what the previous ranking was. Um, which is kind of hard. To, that's why preseason rankings are hard. But so I, I guess I'm being overjudgmental. So I, I guess that's a fair. They spot. moved them down one, probably because of what you said. They didn't see his consistency in the Toronto series. They would have saw, but then you saw them come out against the Braves and demolish them in the first two. But um, the next team is obviously one of our guys uh, over at CTP's favorite team. That's not the Phillies. Um, and that is the Oakland Athletics. Uh, the Oakland Athletics moved up two spots from five to seven, and their bullpen looks like it is unhittable with a .44 ERA so far, so good luck hitting any of those guys. Um, and Ramon Laureano, who obviously is a gold glove potential player, is also hitting like an all-star. 
So that on top of that put together, and obviously my man, Matt Olson hit a walk off grand slam as well as my man, Matt Chapman, who has a home run in the beginning of the game today. So, you know, <laughs> match, the match are doing their thing. Uh, so what do you think about the A's moving up two ticks? I think they probably should be top five, but. Yeah, I thought they looked pretty good for the most part. They've had a, had a, had a decent mix of, of pitch. I think they're if they want to keep going, their starting pitchers need to get better. Um, in in that sense, nineteen runs in five games. I mean, that's probably around an average mark. Um, I think they lost yesterday to the Rockies, which is probably a little disappointing. That hurt them a little bit when they released this. The Rockies uh, look really good early though too. They do. Uh, they, yeah. they struggled. I think that opening game. I think they lost to the. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Rangers, did. but they have not lost since then, um, depending on what happens with this live game um, between the A's and Rockies. But, uh, no, yeah, I, I think I was kind of surprised they bounced the A's up two spots, honestly, because they scrapped out a win. Um, I, I thought they would have stayed a little closer to even when they released these, but I think I think where they have them is a good spot overall. I was just kind of – so I, I thought they would have stayed around even after um, after yeah. yesterday's loss. Um, cause three, three and two about average 20, not a big run differential right now, 20 to 19 on the year. Um, so I, I thought, uh, yeah, I thought I was surprised to see him move two spots, but I, again, I think, I think that's around, they're in a good spot overall where their talent is. Yeah. They probably did it because yeah, the starters, not all of them have looked, uh, great, but obviously you saw Manaya. I watched, uh, most of that game. I, um, he came in and looked good until his final inning and then kind of lost it. And then Lazardo, who they don't know if they're even going to keep him in the pen all season, that might become a starter for you to age your rotation, came in and piggybacked Manaya so well. So that's why I would assume they moved him up because of how well the bullpen basically said, don't worry, we got you, boys, where that normally helps a team to get to the next level rather than, oh, we only have two good starters and our bullpen blows. So unless if these two good starters turn into Madison Bumgarner in the playoffs and just pitch every day, uh, that's not really going to work as well for us. And I don't think anyone's going to do that again. So um, maybe, maybe him again for the diamondbacks, but other than him again, I don't think anyone's going to do that. (laughs) Um, But moving on to the next team, this team moved back one. And like we said, they started the series very bad against Tampa so far. But these teams also been missing their um, Tyler Flowers and Travis Day or no while experienced COVID symptoms. So they had their two young catchers in Jackson and uh, Wilson Contreras, his brother William, as their catchers available. So obviously that changes it up for the pitchers. They don't have a relationship with those guys as much. But they moved down one spot. Dansby Swanson looks like he's set to have a great season. What do you think about our division foe uh, being ranked at six from going back from the five spot? I mean, I, I thought they would have dropped more, to be honest. Um, so did I. <laughs> two and three overall. You mentioned how bad their pitching was these last couple of days against the Rays. Um, they, I know they were missing guys, but, I, I mean, they weren't any – yeah, obviously they have a relationship, but they weren't big powerhouses of that lineup. I don't think it was a bigger loss uh, as it would have been for other players on that team if they were to miss people. Um, but again, I mean, they've struggled out of the gate. So I, I was surprised to see them only two spots, and I, I think they deserved to fall more, if, you're being, if I'm being honest. No, I think so, too. I don't think they've looked too good early. Um, obviously, like I said, with pitching – Obviously, with chemistry, having two young catchers randomly when you thought you would have probably going in catchers you have more experience with is not as easy, but you should still be able to figure out Soroka is the only guy that really looked solid so far out of like what he should have looked like, but still got hit a little hard, but then settled down and pitched a good game. So he looked fine. Other than him, it wasn't the best, but I agree because they're not doing the best overall scoring wise. Everybody you expected hit Acuna doesn't look there yet, unless if Nick Markakis is coming back as the saving grace uh, to get. But he's gonna he's a good guy to get back in their lineup. I think when he comes back now that he's coming back because contact they've been striking out a lot early. Obviously, getting Nick Markakis back is gonna help your strikeout percentage. But nah. 
Yeah. yeah. The Astros dropping from four to seven, you love to see those stinking cheaters. Um, but uh, anyway, the Astros dropping from four to seven um, makes them, that's, I think, justifiable because Verland is out for at least a couple weeks. And obviously, Garrett Cole is no longer on the Astros. Lance McCollars is coming back and looks solid, but you don't know what you're going to get in a full 60 game clip coming off of his injuries. Do you think seven is a good spot for the Astros, or would you actually, with losing Verlander, move them back more because of their pitching? Obviously not offense. Uh, I was confused why they dropped three spots. I, I really was. Yeah, you lose Verlander, but they have, they still have weapons and Granky McCullers and all of them. They still have Azuna, who, I mean, as their closer. They I think still, people think of they, Jose. I think people think like Jose on Zach Granky. That's why. <laughs> but, but still, I mean... <laughs> After all, I mean, they still have Bregman. They still have uh, Carlos Correa. They still have Jose Altuve. They still have Michael Brantley. They still have George Springer. I guess so. I can go on and on. And Kyle Tucker as their they went out. They, they went out and did their job. They won three or four against Seattle. They lost against the team that this uh, this rankings has the Dodgers at number one. So they lost to the number one team uh, according to the power rankings. So I, I don't see why they dropped three spots. To put them behind the Braves, that's ridiculous. I don't think they should have dropped behind the Braves. I would have switched. Yeah, I um, switched. You can still make the case. I think they're better than the Yankees. I mean, on paper. You and think it's looked, because of... And they've looked better than the Yankees. I mean... Do you think it's because they're only bullpen arm with one more year of service time? Or one more year? One, one year over a year of service time as their closer? Maybe that may drop them because, because their best ace got, got injured. Say that again? It's kind of fuzzy, breaking up. The only uh, guy in their bullpen that has more than a year of service time in the majors is Roberto Ozuna. So do you think maybe because Verlander's their ace of their staff, he got out, that's why they probably dropped him three spots? I, I, I Probably. It probably something to do with it. But, again, I don't know. I, I don't know what went behind it. I was surprised and think that was a bit harsh for the Astros. Um, again, I think they're better than the Braves. Um, yeah, I think, I, I think they're, I, I mean, I'd probably say they're probably about five or probably six, maybe just, so just switching that spot, but the job in three spots was a bit harsh. No, it was, but I could care less. It's the Astros. Um, <laughs> I, it, it was, but they're a team that's not in good graces with baseball fans now. So if it's any team that I don't mind dropping for some unexplicable reason. Oh yeah. Especially Joe Kelly. Um, Joe Kelly uh, definitely does not like the Astros. We that right. that was made very bad. <laughs> did you, did, that facial, je- I re I rewinded that and I watched it and then I just see him go like, <laughs> and, I, and I just started dying. I was that that you don't want to see teams clear obviously in the COVID age clear the benches, but that was just the way that that happened was just kind of hilarious. Um. But yeah, don't I don't want to recommend doing that too often uh, with the virus going around. Um, but anyway, the Indians, the team that we talked about being disrespected a bit, and I, uh, maybe I should act Chris Rose in this podcast so he can uh, see how much we love his team. Um, but anyway, the Indians are a team that have been the rotation's been ridiculous. Bieber, Clevenger, Cookie, which is you love to see coming back from his cancer and now getting back in the rotation. And obviously Lindor um, got going yesterday. He looked good in the doubleheader. Um, and he's been five for 22. He's the, that's when he really, he had a two, I think he had a home run in both games. That how, that's how he split his homers. So he looked good yesterday. They already are amazing without him fully at full bore. They're, that team's going to do something. Zimmer's playing well. All these guys are coming in and playing well. I think H's low for them, and I think you also think H's low for them. So where would you put the Indian? I mean, and we'll go, we can go through our final rankings at the end here. Um, because personally, I mean, I disagree with a lot of this to start the year. And you know this. I picked the Indians to win the Central Division. Um, I, I told you, I, I don't remember if it was on, I don't remember which I probably saw on all of them. I don't know. I think it was the one on CTP with you and Biscuit. Um, I view the Indians as coming into the year. I viewed them as a top five team. I think the Indians are really good. I, I they've been 
And I think, again, six spots to jump up in week, one week. So I got to respect that eight that they put him at this week just because of how low they started him. But 14 to start the year, that was the joke. That was the ridiculous spot that they put him in and kind of buried him to start the year. But, um, no, I mean, th- this Indians team is really, really good. It's undervalued. I-, I mean, you saw what Carlos Santana did going back there. He's off to a good start this year, taking walks, hit a home run yesterday. You mentioned how good that rotation was. And, and, and again, I mean, you know Coy Kluber is my favorite pitcher, but in a way, with how bad he was last year, their staff upgrades by losing him and Kipnis because they were both bad last year. So, yeah. for, for me, if you're asking where I'd put him, I mean, I'd put him close to probably – two to four range uh to start this year because again they they were in my top five top six to start the season uh they've only impressed me from the from the get-go here uh plus 11 run differential already they swept the doubleheader yesterday which is impressive in itself so like i think cleveland's still all, all they're going to do is keep going up and uh again i like the indians roster yeah oh so i'm going to correct myself frenchy doubled in i believe this was game one frenchy doubled in game one and then homered i believe in the nightcap uh so he did hit a two-run homer but that was in the nightcap so he didn't hit two homers but either way he got going in the doubleheader so that speaks volumes for them probably moving from eight to maybe five depending how other teams do uh in the rankings uh next week potentially if the uh indians continue to do well and they're obviously if their rotation continues to play like as ridiculous as they're playing now, here's a team that I don't think everybody expected to get off to this good of a start. Now, I will credit the high-energy motivation guy, great dude, everybody loves him, David Ross. Young manager, came in with the Cubs, already has experience with them. I think that's really helpful, actually, because I don't think pe- he seems to be getting a lot out of these guys early. Um, the rotation right now has a 180 ERA and a .63 whip one time through nobody thought the Cubs rotation was other than Hendricks was going to take a gigantic, like including me was going to take a gigantic fall because they lost some people and they lost and all these veterans are aging and haven't been pitching like Darvish doesn't pitch like Darvish usually anymore. Lester hasn't pitched like Lester anymore. Then he threw five, no hit innings. So, um, yeah, the cup, the Cubs might be a little bit more than I, uh, were a lot more than I thought they were. I don't know where you had them ranked coming in because they're doing great, and their lineup has scored eight-plus runs three times, I should also point out. Uh, their bullpen, though, has looked bad. That's what they have to correct, allowing 15 earned runs. But other than that, uh, what do you think about this Cubbies team? Yeah, this team is very surprising. I don't think – I mean, I didn't expect them to get off to this good of a start. Um I wasn't high on the Brewers, so they, they take advantage of playing Milwaukee to start the year. Um, and then they go up against the Reds here, uh, and they find a way to kind of knock them off early on here. Uh, who I'm high on the Reds this year. I don't think the Cubs can sustain it for the, for the rest of the year, but good start for the Cubs. They absolutely deserve to move up in the power rankings after a good start. Um, as you mentioned, though, I thought four spots was a little – was a pretty significant jump for them as good as they looked as you mentioned they have a huge huge uh, hole in that bullpen that we'll see if that carries them back a little bit uh they almost blew the game monday night with craig crumble coming in and they had to pull him before he could get the save um yeah. so that's definitely a concern here but again the plus 10 run differential is really good uh it's a good spot for the cubs there um but yeah no overall very surprising team might be one of the most surprising teams so far on, on this early year no, I completely agree. They have been my my biggest surprise watching them. They play great. And, I mean, I love John Lester, so I didn't think he had as much le- – I think he – I thought he could still be a solid innings eater that has a 3-5 up ERA. Hell, if he keeps pitching like that, uh, oh, you know, he might <laughs> he might contend for the Cy Young in a 60-game season. Um, but that that's going to be weird. Like, imagine if someone like that continues to pitch really well and then, like, John Lester wins the Cy Young in a 60 game season. You're like, John Lester? I didn't even realize John Lester was that great anymore. <laughs> like, That's uh, fair. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, no, but the Nationals, I know um, Soto got cleared by them. I don't know if he got cleared yet by Washington's health officials. Nope. That was the last step. He still hasn't. Uh, as far as I know, they have not released what DC's or what yeah, the Nat or 
DC's officials. Okay. Yeah, so he's still. So I, I doubt. I say he's probably there two away still. Okay. Which, which stinks because he's he's gonna get cleared, and then they don't even have a game this weekend. So he's gonna get cleared to not play this weekend. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's <laughs> so that, that poor guy. All he wants yeah. to do, all all the former or all the, uh, or, I guess Strasburg won. I thought for a second I thought he won World Series MVP. I guess Strasburg won, right? Yeah, Strauss. Won, yeah. The almost the almost World Series MVP because that guy lit it up in the playoffs last year. All that poor guy wants to do is get back, get back and play. But uh, yeah, yeah, he went ballistic in the playoffs. Um, but. Yeah, you can't. Uh, they said with the Nationals, they were last week nine. They moved back one to start one and four. The way they put it was, you can't punish them for being one and two in an opening series against the Yankees, but they could have scored two runs or less in four of their first five. Uh, or, but they've scored two runs or less in four of their first five. I mean, obviously, when Soto comes back, that would help. Um, but Strasburg's nerve issue obviously does not help the Nationals. And then Scherzer looked like a mix of himself and not himself in his first start to allow those four runs. So uh, the Nationals, are you surprised they stayed at 10? Or do you think that's just because they gave him the benefit of the doubt not having Soda? Well, and here's here's the here's my factor, though. And this is why, if I was able to talk to any of these guys, why I'd question them. Um is they make the argument is you can't fault them because they're missing Soto and they're missing Strasburg. But, my okay, my argument to that is, well, how did you drop the Astros that many spots from the guy or two? So you're kind of contradicting yourself here. Because um, even though they were missing those guys, they went out and lost their games. The Astros were missing those guys, and they found ways to win. Um, so that's, that's why I, I would want to know, like, and that's – I wouldn't be surprised if they only dropped one spot if they stayed consistent with it. But I'd say I would I was surprised because of the, if you the way you look at all these other rankings and, and the way they've kind of dropped teams, jumped teams and stuff is that they've kind of weighed all that. But but here it, it's so to me it was just a little contradictory. And that's why that's why I'd ask them is why why the uh, sudden change there. Um, no, you could move with how the I hate the Mets, but you could move with. Uh... How the Mets looked decent, honestly, to 10 with how the uh, Nationals looked off. The Drays were at 18. I don't know if I would have moved them 18 to 10. They moved up to 13 already, but you could have argued it with a 4 and one start. Um, but, yeah, that's a, those are teams you could have debated, obviously. The Cardinals would have been hard to uh, keep at 10, so that might be why they did that, because Michaelis got injured, Martinez got shelled, and the uh, Hudson got shelled in their first start. Only Flaherty has looked uh, good so far. But we were going to just go through the top 10. Uh, we're at the 33-minute mark. But I was going to say out of the top 15, who's your most interesting team in the next five? 11's the Cardinals. I just mentioned Michaelis is out and the others got shelled. 12 is the Mets, who uh, have Syndergaard, obviously, with Tommy John. And they won't have um, Stroman for the first few weeks due to his muscle and his calf. Porcello's first start was obviously an absolute mess. But the Grom, Matt, and uh, Waka, who's coming back and trying to look good, all looked great. Same with Steven Matt. And then the Padres, who have Hosmer doing great, and Paddock's doing his thing, the Reds, and the Brewers. I know it's not going to be the Brewers because you already said you don't like the Brewers, so I doubt you're going to be like, oh, all of a sudden I'm going to pick the Brewers. <laughs> Uh, but so out of the Brewers, Reds, Padres, Yanks, and Cardinals to go over it again, who's your favorite team to potentially move into the top 10 maybe out of that five? Listen, it's it's three, four games into the year, so I, I can't give up on the Reds yet. I, I'm going to say Cincinnati um, for multiple reasons. Um, first off, I mean, when you, when you look at it, I mean, you know, you know, as good as anybody, baseball is a weird sport. Anybody can win any given day. I mean, you look at this, they're plus or they're, yeah, they're uh, plus minus run differentials, only a minus one right now. So they're in every game. They're just hitting some un, uh, unfortunate luck here and there. Um, the, I expect them to bounce back, um, within these next coming days. I mean, you, you got a week here and we already mentioned how surprised we are about the, um, about the Cubs, you get two more with the Cubs uh, this week. So if you're able to find a way, find a way to battle, steal kind of some of those games, um, you, you win those. 
Uh, then I, I'm bl- blank on who they're playing this weekend. I'm trying to find out. But if if you're able to take care of business, so they got the they got the Tigers this weekend. So that's not that impressive a win. But again, if you go out there, take care of business, you, you get two out of three, what you need, especially after losing to them. That's crazy. They're playing each other already that fast for being out of the division. Um, but I mean, you had that disappointing weekend last weekend, and that's why you see them drop from eight to fourteen, and that's why I'd say they're probably the most disappointing. My most disappointing team out of this first week would be the Reds. I expected more from them. Um, yeah. But with that being said, you, you got to give credit to um, all all the other teams moving up. So I'd say look out for um, the most. Or, I don't know. I'd say. Another team to look out for. Um, well, I guess, so I guess Nationals aren't playing this weekend. Um, I, I'd say a, a big note and, and a good if you need if you want baseball to watch this weekend and you don't know which series to watch outside the Phillies, tune into the two hot teams out of the gate here. Uh, I think most of us would expect both of them to kind of drop off by the end of the year. But hey, sixty games early benefit for everyone. Go check out the Padres Rockies series this weekend. Two hot teams out of the gate. Uh, who knows where they're going to end up, but they're both battling. Um, these rankings didn't love the Rockies just yet. They only moved them up uh, to two spots, up to 21. I think you could argue a little better than 21 there with the offense, the potential in that offense between Arenado and Blackman and all those guys. Uh, they went out, stole a game from the, not stole, but they beat the A's yesterday. Uh, they're currently up on the A's right now. So if they steal another one out there in Oakland, uh, I think that's a good sign for him. So if you if you want if you want a good series to look out for this weekend, um, outside of Phillies baseball, go go check out Padres Rockies. I think it's going to be a pretty good one. So uh, those are those are, I guess Padres Reds are the teams to look out for on the rise here. Yeah, that's true. That's completely true. That makes sense. But um, I don't know if you had to close out. We'll just give what our rankings are and see how they differ. Um. If you wanted to, did you want me to go first or do you want to go first? You go first. We go on oh. top ten or holy. I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not naming the whole freaking thirty people in this. Okay. Week. Since yeah. since we are a Phillies podcast, I don't have to give me an exact number. Um, put the Phillies where you'd have them. Obviously, I'll need to go who's around them, but that's just say where you would have the Phillies right now. They were at fifteen. They moved to sixteen on their rankings. Um. I would say that's fine because if they were at 15, moving back one makes sense because Vinny, who probably had them at one up, looking good in camp, looked atrocious against the Marlins, obviously. So um, I think that probably pushed us back a tad. So I would say where we're at, I wouldn't put us ahead of 15 or 16. So I would just keep us right around there. But overall, I don't know how the Yankees are going to do with – some of their, other than Cole, how guys are going to consistently do. Obviously, Paxton didn't look like he did last year in his first start. But for the first weekend, how they looked in the short periods of games they were able to play, uh, for now, i rank the Yankees first. All this is changeable by weeks, like whenever we do episodes yeah, of the power rankings. Yeah, so I might have the Yankees sucking next week if they do terrible this week. But they're first for now. The Twins, for me, because of how good they looked and always are underrated, uh, are second because their pitching's also looked. Barrios is a game changer if he can stay healthy and pitch great. Um, the Dodgers, I'm going to keep at three because they're the freaking Dodgers. They're going to figure they're not going to. If they- The Athletics, I have at four. The Indians, you're welcome, Chris Rose. Um, I have coming in in the top five at number five. So you're very welcome, Chris Rose. Um, Still the, too Ast- the Astros, I have at six. And the other ones are tough because there's so many teams interchangeably. I don't want to move the Cubs up that much yet. I'm going to put – I put the Braves at seven because the Braves are still a team that are good and they just haven't got they, – they just had a rough first weekend. Uh, I, I put the – like I didn't even fill out because I couldn't figure out an 8-9. Right now I put the Cubs 
at uh, 10 because the Cubs impressed, but they moving them all the way up to nine, I think, was a little bit of a stretch. So I put them at 10. Eight, nine for me was such a coin flip because I really like, um, even though they lost Michaelis, the fact that they were able to go two and two with two guys looking like crap and then Flaherty looking good. I think with the Cardinals, with their overall roster, might be able to figure it out. So I was debating putting them at nine. And then my um, my eight would have, by default, I think, been because I think they're going to bounce back to the Nationals. So it was kind of where am I putting those people? So I would, I'll go Nationals eight because I think the Nationals also, obviously, uh, I'm looking at that as they didn't even have Soto and – then I'm going to put the um, – I almost debated putting the Mets at nine, but in sake of not getting yelled at by Biscuit uh, when he listens to our podcast, potentially I'll put uh, I'll stick with my choice of the Cardinals. <laughs> uh, so because the Mets have impressed me early, which is unfortunate, um, other than Rick Porcello. Um, the Mets have impressed me early. So they're debatable. They might be – I would put them at 11, honestly, for me right outside of the top 10 probably. And then the Padres would be 12. But who do you have as yours? You said the – I guess you have Indians in the top three. Well, well, why don't you just run through yours real quick again since you went through all 10. So without giving an explanation, just run through your 10 real quick just to remind everyone. Yankees, Twins, Dodgers, A's, Indians, Strohs, which I wanted to move below six, but I just couldn't do it. Uh, (laughs) Braves, Nationals, Cards, and Cubs. Okay, um, so we're actually we're actually going to disagree on a lot of these. Um, personally, I think uh, best team in baseball right now. It, it looks like the, the Twins. I mean, that offense just looks unstoppable, and that's why. Um, that's that. Oh, I already. Oh, wait a minute! I just I, I just realized something. Let me correct myself. I I I wrote down and then crossed them out. I put. I didn't even mean to put – I'm probably going to kick the Nationals out for that now because I wrote the Rays and then crossed out to put the Nats in a different thing and then didn't put the Rays in at all. So I can – I didn't even – yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I completely messed that up actually. So I would go so, – Why don't you think about it? I'll just run through mine. Yeah, I, yeah, I completely – because I was actually going to put the Rays second or first and then put the Yan- Yankees. So let me switch this. It. I would go Rays, Yankee, Yankees – Twins would then be three, so it would be Rays because they started good. Yanks, Twins. I would keep the. Uh, at that point, I'm then switching the Dodgers because I'm not putting the Dodgers ahead of the. Uh, I might move the Dodgers then, so I would put the Athletics switch with the Dodgers because I just did that because the A should be in the top four, and I kept the Dodgers because of their team. I'm not going to have that bias if. I forgot about the Rays, so screw the Dodgers. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I would go the Rays, Yanks, Twins, Athletics. The Dodgers would then be sixth, honestly, after their first week with the Indians still being fifth. And then the Astros would round it out with seventh, the Braves at eight, uh, right, and then the Cards at nine, and then the Cubs at ten. So that just boots the Nationals for their first week out of my top ten. Because I realized <laughs> I crossed them out. I crossed out the Rays, and then I never put them back in because I was going to move where I had them positioned. Then I just never even ranked them. So that was that was a complete brain fart. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so I'll go. Twins pitching has been shaky a little bit right now, but, but I'll, lead, I'll still lead with them because of that offense uh, and plus 13 run differential, which is the um, second best – Second best in baseball, which is funny because the best is the Dodgers, at, even though they have two losses. Um, but that, like we said, the Dodgers got off to such a good start, uh, and they're blowing out the Giants. But I'm going to go Twins look the best. Um, and then their mix of offense their mix of offense and uh, pitching right now, Indians are, Indians are going to be number two. Now, I really think the Indians look okay. that good. Um, I can th- respect that. I just want to see one more week. That's all that I have. <laughs> That's fair. But yeah. again, I had them as a f- number five team coming into the year. So yeah, you had them a big, lot higher. Not that me. that big of a jump so for me, me. Putting them at five is actually a pretty big accomplishment because yeah. I did not have the hopes for the. I thought they would be good, but you thought they would be great. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, number number three, 
I'm going to leave the Dodgers number three. Um, again, I think I mean they're 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 still better than the Yankees and Rays. Um, number four, I'll go. This, this, this is where you start running some tough teams. I think it's it, it starts to even out here. Number four, I'm going to go to Astros. Um, Dodgers beat the Astros 5-2 last night, and we'll see what happens tonight in this rivalry, which actually, speaking about that, you mentioned Joe Kelly. Uh, quick breaking news, Joe Kelly has just been suspended for eight games uh, for his actions yesterday. Um, Dodgers manager... Dave Roberts has been spent suspended one game, and Dusty Baker has been fined. That is all I saw, at least for now. Yeah, I just saw that too. Uh, good, correct me if you see anyone catch. else. Um, number five, I'm going to give it to the Rays. Uh, I'll res- I mean, I'm still not high on them, too high on them, but you got to respect what they have shown. Hey, um, and hey, they, I like that. they look better to me than the uh, Yankees. Um, yeah, Yankees found a way to scrap out three w- or two wins against the Nationals, but I mean they still got a negative three run differential, so I'm going to punish them for that a little bit. Um, so we'll we'll slide the Yankees into the sixth spot here, which again is a little generous, I think, for me. I, I you know I wasn't even high on the Yankees really coming into this year. Um, oh, no, 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 take that back, take that back, take that back. I'm going to give the A's the sixth spot. Um, I think Oakland has looked better than them. Uh, so I'll give the, yeah, I'll give the A's a six spot here coming in at number seven. I will, I'll put the Yankees here for now until I think of someone else. <laughs> um, nah, but uh, again, the Yankees still are talented. So I'll give them that slight edge. Who'd you put at two, by the way? Cause I missed that. I have everybody uh, written down besides Indian. you for two. Indian. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Love for the Indians. Um, eight coming in at number eight. I will say I'll give it to the Cubs. Okay, you did them one extra than I did. Again, I think that's going to fall by year's end, but if we're going off right now. Uh, number nine, I will give I know you did them two extra than I did, actually. Number nine, I'll give to the St. Louis Cardinals. That we actually agreed on. And then number two. 10 this is tough I'm it's it's between teams in the east here uh then I'll east I, I'm gonna I'll go Braves but the Mets are not far behind let's just say that they are not unfortunately so I'll, I'll, run, I'll have the Braves round out the top 10 there, which I don't know how I feel about that. But yeah, I'll, I'll say that right now. So for right now, week one, and this is a mix of beginning of the season, current talent, and how they played. Yeah. Because um, obviously we're just going off the first week, how they played. Padres should be up there. But this is all three mixed in. Uh, so my number one, Twins, two Indians, three Dodgers, four Astros, five Rays, six A's, seven Yankees, Eight Cubs, nine Cardinals, and ten the Atlanta Braves. Um, yeah. And then to answer my own question to you, just throwing teams in the mix. If I was to throw the Phillies, you figure Mets would be in front. This is no order, but Mets would be in front. Uh, Nationals would be in front. Padres would be in front. Brewers would have to be in front right now. Um, so you're looking at around 15, 16. You could even make the argument with Diamondbacks, Blue Jays, one of those teams. Um, even though, even the Rockies, you can make an argument, but I'll, I'll say Phillies right now about 15, 16, like you. Yeah. The same spot staying in the same spot. So yeah, the only one that we had in the, uh, do, 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 same spot was the cards. Yeah. I, I mean, overall the teams are the same, it's just, we have them on shaken up in different ways. And well, uh, because you did what I did for the Indians for the Rays, Cause I was very high on the Rays coming in. You were very high on the Indian. I moved the Indians into the top five. After how they looked from the first week, you weren't very high on the Rays. So then you moved the Rays into the top five and moved the Indians to two. I moved the Rays. Granted, I moved the Rays a lot, even more than you moved the Indians. Because once I realized (laughs) I mistakenly left them out because I meant to put them at number one and then I crossed them out because I 
wrote on the wrong sheet. I meant to write on something else and I wrote the whole wrong thing. So I crossed them out and put the nationals because I wrote, I was going backwards from 10, 9, 8, 7. And then I wrote like I was going from one and I was like, oh crap. Uh, so, um, but no, the Rays I put first, the Yankees second. So that's a good division battle potentially. Twins, Athletics, Indians, Dodgers, Strohs, Braves, Cards, Cubs. While well, Andrews was the Twins. The Indians, Dodgers, Strohs, Ye- Rays. I must have said Yays. Rays. <laughs> hey, tough back to back teams. <laughs> Tongue twister. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Rays and A's. And, and uh, the Yankees, Cubs, Cardinals, and Braves. So um, that's uh, how he had it. But this has been our power ranking show. We're going to do a preview to the Phillies. That'll come out on Friday. And we'll have our previews for hockey and basketball episodes coming out shortly as well. But, Andrew, I don't know if you had a uh, going out message or where to find you on uh, Twitter and all that good stuff. Yeah, just thoughts and prayers with the Marlins right now. Hopefully they can figure everything out. Same with Eduardo or Eduardo Rodriguez. Hopefully things can work out for him as he continues the battle. Um, yeah, hopefully everyone can just continue to stay safe, um, do the right things. Eventually we'll get through it, and hopefully we can finally get Phillies baseball back this weekend. And uh, I know this one's baseball, but I'm also very excited to – Get out there, watch the Sixers and Flyers get back open this weekend, and uh, let's even show the Union some love. I, I've been watching a lot of their games um, right before it shut down. Or Yeah, I watched some of them last year, and then I've definitely been watching all of them since they restarted. And they're in the quarterfinals. For all we know, that could be the next uh, Philadelphia championship. So get out there and watch them Thursday night. That's true. Yeah, I, I actually watched some of them when I had time between watching the baseball and Hockey, I paid attention to the union. I put it on on my tablet the other night to watch the end of the one game. But, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. Stuff's coming back. Philly's back this weekend. Excuse me. Stay tuned for a preview. But this has been Jetpacks to the Bank, the power rankings segment. We'll probably continue to do these every couple weeks. I don't think we'll do Yeah, I don't think we'll do it every week like the actual insiders do, unless if we find that much time on our hand. Um, but, uh this has been Jetpacks to the Bank. You can find Andrew at AJ underscore Santangelo on Twitter and me at JJ Borick 26. The podcast spelled out True Philadelphian Sportscast with the double S's um, <laughs> on uh, Instagram and uh, Tumblr and then True TRU underscore Philly Sport on Twitter. Have a great and pleasant day, everybody. We wish the Marlins and everyone well as they recover. We wish Eduardo very well as he recovers as well. But have a great and safe day, everybody. Peace out.